Hey guys, how's it going? Now I'm literally just getting out of the theater. I'm just getting home from watching Revival of F, Dragon Ball Z, Return of F, Frieza Returns, all that. This movie was amazing. Um, that's all I can say. It it's really reaffirmed my love for Dragon Ball Z. Um, I was saying because of Dragon Ball Super and how that's been progressing. At first, I was being, I was getting worried, and I was like, ah, I'm not sure about Dragon Ball Z. It's gonna be the same thing. But this movie, it was funny, had action, and it looked amazing. That was the most important thing for me. It, it looked great. I mean, it felt like a movie. It felt like a production. A funny part was before the movie started, they had a question and answer with the cast and the, the voice actors. So that was a great moment as well, because they asked them questions such as, um, who was the fifth member of the Ginyu Force? This was a name. I think the name ended up being, um, crap, I don't remember the name. Another question they asked was, how many planets did Frieza conquer? Um, and it ended up being like 79, so the interaction with the cast was great, and seeing because I didn't remember, or I don't think I remembered what the cast, the voice actors looked like. And just seeing them and hearing them in the regular voices, and then you kind of compare their voices to how they sound when they're playing, um, when they're voicing over these characters. So that, that was a good moment. But for the movie, funny. Just hilarious. Jocko was funny. Vegeta was hilarious because he, he has one-liners. He reminds me of Zoro with his one-liners. But they're hilarious one line. Frieza's commander, didn't feel the need to remember his name, he basically, he's desperate now so he wants to go to Earth to get Dragon Balls to revive Frieza. So at that point Pilaf and his crew, they have six Dragon Balls. So they go to Earth, they approach them, rough them of their Dragon Balls, and then they go and get the seventh one, and then they dip. They just leave Earth. Um, Piccolo and Gohan felt it, but they left too quickly, but Piccolo knew that they may be in trouble. Seeing Piccolo was great too, because at the beginning you saw Piccolo, he's pushing Baby Pan with his foot, and he still has this stern look on his face as usual. So that was a great moment. And then Gohan and Videl just walks out the store, and just seeing them is always good, except when you think about what Gohan used to be and where he should be. He should be challenging Goku for the strongest Saiyan. That's where he should be. He's definitely stronger than Vegeta. Or he should be stronger than Vegeta. He has more potential. But he, you know, he's in college. He's wearing glasses. He's wearing his green tracksuit everywhere, looking like an adult gone. Anyways, um, the movie moves on and they revive Frieza. Shenron says, I don't think this is wise because he got chopped into all these pieces. Um, so bringing his soul back and he's in pieces it doesn't matter. It's no point to it. Are you sure? So they still do it. And then Shenron's like, well, you, ha you have two wishes now. So let me know what's your other wish. And then the dog that's always with, um, that's always with Pilaf comes out of nowhere. We wish for one million zenny. The girl who, who says Trunks is a boyfriend says, um, what about wishing for a hundred million zenny? That would have been like a hundred times better. He's like, no. People that have too much money end up having rich kids that own bars. It's like, so out of left field, but it was hilarious. So then they go to the ship, and then Frieza is now revived. He's pretty much still obsessed with the Saiyans, right? That's the same goal, and he's talking about Trunks and Goku. And his people are saying that they can't find Trunks anywhere, and they think he may have retired to another galaxy, or he's dead. Only one they can find is Goku. He's like, ah, that's the one I want anyway. So then he's saying that he's never trained a day in his life and he was that powerful, so he's going to train for four months. Now this is where I call BS, where Goku has been training every day, literally since Frieza has died. And Frieza comes and trains for four months and he attains a new form. But I guess because he's never trained in his life, it kind of it kind of balances it out. We cut to Jocko, who is probably the funniest person in the movie. He comes to Earth and... He's, he basically wants to warn them that Frieza is on their way. So then he's stopped by Bulma's dad, and he gets super sidetracked. He ends up feeling goldfish, and he's like, hey, man, I shouldn't be here. He's like, where's Bulma? And he's telling Bulma about what's going to happen, and she's like, okay, Goku and Vegeta's still not here. Um, I think Gohan and everybody else should be okay. Now, mind you, Gohan has not been training. He's been going to college. 
and having kids. That's what Gohan's been doing. He's nowhere where he used to be. And so they left they're left with Krillin, Piccolo, Master Roshi. Um I think that was it. And and Jocko ended up fighting as well. So the most of it was fodder battles, right? Where they're just they're just showing the visuals off. They're showing um Gohan. He's he's basically great Saiyan man without the suit because he's not He's not giving any fatal blows. He's just knocking him out. Simple. And it, it was a great visual start to the movie. It was amazing. Jocko, he's dropping his one-liners like, listen, man. Um, suicide is something that we do not practice in the galaxy. I will not be going against Frieza. But I was like, come on, isn't that your job to, to do this type of stuff? He's like, yeah, but we don't, we don't do suicide missions. All the fodder is knocked out now. So Frieza gets a one hit in on Gohan. Just one hit. And it knocked him out. You know, they gave him a sensu beam, but it was like one hit. He didn't even transform, he's in his regular form, and Gohan was done. I mean, meanwhile, Vegeta and Goku are training with Whis. And Whis is giving him speed training. Because basically, he's saying that they think too much. That um, Vegeta, he's too uptight. Where because of how uptight and how wound he is, he thinks too much when he's fighting. He said Goku does less of that but Goku is too laid back. They said Goku is he's overconfident and he's too lenient and he's always off guard. And they also hinted towards if they were together no one could best them which I'm thinking is going to be another movie because Beerus I think he's too much of a wild card. It's like if he knows he can destroy a planet he will forever have reign over them. I mean he's hilarious and I love the character and the voice acting, the voice acting in this movie was spectacular. I guess that's another reason why I don't, I'm not that much of a fan of Super because of the voice acting. King Kai and Goku, specifically, they're pretty bad. Ah, pretty bad. The whole time Goku and Vegeta's training, they're talking about food. The funniest moment I think when they were training is when um, Whisk gives Beerus leftovers, right? And then he's eating, he's like, um, what's this dairy substance? It's this thing that's better when melted. And Vegeta comes out of nowhere, it's cheese. He ends up fighting with Goku for a while because he wanted to fight Frieza. Because Goku was owning him at first. And it, Goku was in his regular form. Frieza was in his final form and Goku was owning him. And then, you know, they then have a conversation about they're both holding back. Which happens in every show. Goku goes Super Saiyan God. And the visual on that, I mean, you know, what's not to like? And Frieza goes to Golden Frieza. And then it's funny when he first transforms, he's like, I'm going to keep this simple. We're just going to call it Golden Frieza. So Bears and Brits, they come later. And while Goku and Frieza are fighting, they're having casual conversation about food. They're eating this Sunday. They're talking about strawberries. And, you know, the tide changed after Frieza transformed. So they're saying casually, oh, well, Frieza looks like he's going to win now. And Boma's like, seriously, you let him destroy the planet? He's like, listen, I, your planet is only still here because of the delicacies. But I would at least keep you alive because you provide them. If you want to stay alive, just, just stay next to me. At the same time, the whole group just goes next to Beerus. Vegeta says it's his turn. And if Koku says, well, you just want to go because you see his weakness as well. And Frieza's like, please enlighten me. What's my weakness? So Goku's saying, basically you should have waited before you came to Earth. You should have tested yourself in that golden form before you just jumped down here. Goku starts besting Frieza because Frieza's running out of gas. And Goku's still chilling in his god mode, which looks fantastic, by the way. The, the, the visuals were so good. Frieza gives his commander a head nod, and he shoots Goku with a ray gun through his heart. And Goku was done after that point, and it's like um, Frieza af offers Vegeta a spot as his top commander of his forces. And Vegeta looks like he's thinking about it, but then he's like, ah, no. What keeps me going is the rivalry between me and Goku. That's what keeps me going. So thanks, but no thanks. So then Frieza's saying, um, you would say that to me? Because Frieza doesn't know how strong Vegeta is. And Vegeta just throws him off guard because Vegeta just goes God, Super Saiyan God mode. And Frieza's just in shock. And Vegeta, he had some epic moments because he just looks so big.
beastly in that mode. And he was just owning Frieza. So then he beats Frieza, and then Frieza's like pounding the ground, like, why is it happening? Why are things going this way? And at the same point, he puts his hands into the earth, and then he destroys the core of the earth, I believe, and then the earth blows up. At the same point, Beerus says, Whis, quickly, and everyone that was next to Whis and Beerus, they got teleported or they got out of the earth before he got destroyed. Goku saying that it was his fault, he should have destroyed Frieza when he had the chance. Because basically, the reason why he got shot with that gun is because he was telling Frieza to get out of here. You can come back, I'll give you a rematch, don't worry about it. So, Goku as usual, he's being too lenient. That's his problem. So then, before it was mentioned that Whis can, he has a temporal time power where he can go back in time and the max is three minutes. So they go back and they get back to the same point where Frieza is about to do the same thing and Goku comes out of nowhere with a Kamehameha and just destroys Frieza. That was the end of F, apparently. I forgot to mention with Frieza, when he's in hell, they have, um, apparently hell consists of snow bunnies. Not snow bunnies. It consists of bunnies and teddy bears and happy things. That's hell. Well, that's hell for Frieza, I guess. I guess this was kind of hinting towards what hell is, and that hell is your worst possible nightmare. So for Frieza, his worst fear is happiness. So hell for him was happiness. I thought it was interesting how they kind of threw that in there. It's a topic that would be debated for a long time. But we move on. So the Frieza's destroyed, and Vegeta's pissed. Because I guess when they go back, I think Vegeta was dead. So I guess when they go back, whoever was dead, they don't know anything about that time, the temporal time thing that Whis did. So he was just in the dark. He's like, why the hell did you do that? That was my moment to shine. You owe me. They let him know what happened. And then they have a good moment where it's like, they mention again them working together. And Vegeta's like, I'd rather die. And Goku's like, well, I'm with you. And then they're like, finally we agree on something. That's always a good moment seeing them get along. I mean, that was basically it. Um, like I said, it was, it's a funny movie. The action was great. The visuals were awesome. The voice acting was amazing. It was overall a great production. The whole time I was just so into it and I was blown away. That's, that's pretty much what I said. I, I was blown away by how good it was. My willingness to watch Dragon Ball Super has been, it's kind of been multiplied because of how good that movie was. And I know it was, it was kind of breaking in the top 10 already in three days because it's not showing everywhere. It's showing in select theaters and you have to really search for it. So I ended up, I ended up buying my tickets online like last night. So when I went to the theater, everyone was saying at the line, literally everyone had their phone out with their ticket on, on their phone because everybody was saying, okay, I wasn't sure if it was gonna be sold out, so I didn't wanna take chances. Anyways, great stuff. Um, I recommend it for everybody. If you're a fan of Dragon Ball Z or anime or anything in particular, go on and, and watch this. It, it will not disappoint, I'll say that. Like the video if you did, if you've seen the movie, you know, even if you haven't seen the movie, comment, let me know what you think. And please subscribe um, to my channel. Alright, thanks guys. Have a good one.